journey of bengaluru from bendekaluru to bangalore is a beautiful effort to portray the transition the city has undergone to become what it is today the capital of karnataka the story of bengaluru is quite fascinating The Begur inscription of Ganga of Talakad found in the Parvati Nageshwara temple at Begur referred to the name of a city called Bengaval Uru meaning city of gods in Kannada as early as 9th century Later in the 12th century King Veerabalala as said to have chanced upon the city while getting lost during a hunting session after being offered a bowl of boiled beans by an old lady he called the place where he found the lady Bende Kaluru or city of boiled beans in Kannada With the defeat of the Vijayanagara Empire, the last of the Hindu Empire of the Karnataka, in the Battle of Talikotte, many of its feudatories declared their independence. One of the feudatories is no other than Elankanadu Prabhu. The most popular and powerful ruler of the Elankanadu Prabhu is no other than Kitta Goda. It is he who founded the city of Bangalore. To mark the directions of the city, he built four watchtowers. Today we find these watchtowers in Alsu, Kimbambudi, Nekri Circle and Lalbagh. Chikkadevaraja Odiyar the 14th ruler of the Mysore dynasty was the man who rewrote Bengaluru's destiny after the Bijapur sultans Bengaluru fell into the hands of Marathas Ikoji the half brother of Shivaji decided to sell it to the highest bidder when Ikoji was negotiating with the Odiyars Kasim Khan a Mughal governor captured Bangalore and hoisted the imperial flag on July 10, 1687. When Ikoji decided to retaliate, Chikkadevaraja Wadiyar stood for the Mughals and fought in favor of them. This good fortune fetched him Bangalore for an amount of 3 lakh rupees. History of modern Karnataka or Mysore starts with the rise of Hyderli and Tipu Sultan. It is Hyderli and Tipu Sultan who were the first among the rulers of Karnataka who fought against the British. With the defeat of the Tipu Sultan, 
in the fourth anglo mysore war in the year 1799 mysore completely came under the control of british in the year 1799 british for the administrative convenience handed over the mysore state to oriyas this event is known as restoration so mysore entered restoration in the year 1799 Because the Krishna Raj Odia is minor, then the Divan Purnaya was allowed to administrate the Mysore state from 1799 to 1811. In the year 1812, Krishna Raj Odia the third directly took over the administration of the state, and he ruled up to 1831. So why this age is very important? Why this timeline is very important? It is so because it is during this time that is in the year 1806 British thought the Bangalore is a very pleasant place so it is because of that they shifted the garrison from Sri Rangapatnam to Bangalore in this way they successfully established a cantonment in Bangalore so this transition of establishing a cantonment which completely brought a new epoch in the history of the country In the year 1831 during the rule of Lord Cobden Bangalore became the capital of Mysore state This initiative completely changed the court of the city In a way the city became one of the most developed cities of South India To add to the credit during the divanship of P N Krishnamurti The city got electricity in the year 1905 on August 3 at 6:30 p.m. and was the first city in India to have the luxury of electricity. Bangalore kept developing at a rapid pace. Its role during World War can never be forgotten. After the Indian independence it became the capital of mysore state of later karnataka its growth among the cities of india made it to be crystal the garden city silicon valley and information technology of india in the year 2006 bangalore was renamed as bengaluru on the recommendation made by famous poet anantamurthy The journey of Bengaluru from Bendekaluru to Bangalore is an interesting tale of growth and development. Our city has evolved into one of the most happening places in the country and this was a narrative of how it grew into becoming a home to millions of people who cherish it.